Apple have just released iOS and iPadOS 18.2 with Apple Intelligence features. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know and importantly, whether you should update. Let's go. So while 18.2 is available on a bunch of different devices, to get the Apple Intelligence features, you will need at least an iPhone 15 Pro or any iPhone 16. With the iPad, you'll need the 17 Pro or any M1 or better iPad. And with Mac, because yes, it is available on the new Mac OS Sequoia 15.2, you will need a Mac with M1 or better. And the good news for us here in Australia and New Zealand is that yes, we now have our localized language for those enhanced features as well. And we join Canada, Ireland, South Africa, the UK and the US who already have it. To download and install the update here on your iPad or your iPhone, go to your settings app, go to general and tap on software update. It'll check for an update and there it is, iPad OS 18.2. Hit the update now button or tonight if you want to do it later and it will download and then install the new OS. On your Mac, once again, go to settings and general and software update and follow pretty much the same process. So the million dollar question is, should you update to the new operating system if you can? Well, say it with me, folks. If you're in the middle of a major project, if you have some mission critical work that you're doing right now, don't update. We've seen it time and time again that updating can have some flow on effects to other apps or plugins or things that you're using or doing on your current devices. So if you have a daily driver, your main device that you're using for critical work, yeah, maybe just let other people be the guinea pigs and wait a little while before you update. However, if you do want to find out what all the fuss is about with Apple intelligence and check out these features for yourself, I get it. FOMO is a real thing, fear of missing out. So jump in and update. There haven't been a heap of reports of horrific things happening, so you will be pretty safe. If you have two devices, I'll always say update your least important device first and have a play on that. So what do we actually have available in these new updates? Well, I'll be covering those in a deep dive video. You can check that one out down in the description. But just to give you a bit of a taste, we have the new Photos app. Now, if you've used this in previous versions of iOS 18, yeah, not everyone loves it. It has changed the layout, but there are some cool features like the new Memories feature in there and the Photo Cleanup. Now, you could say, hey, Google have been doing this for a decade, but it is nice to have these additional features. And once you get used to the new layout of the Photos app, it is pretty cool. Image Playground. So this is like a cartoony version of those AI image generators that you may have already already used. So yeah, you're not going to create the next realistic deep fake, but it is kind of fun to play with and just to throw some ideas in there and uh, see what you get. Genmoji. Yes, it's generative emoji that builds on the concept to create your own custom emojis that you can use in your conversations. Rainbow cacti, anyone? Now, if you're terrible at drawing like I am and you want some handwritten diagrams and images in your notes, yeah, the new image wand is here and we'll be checking that out in the deep dive video. Too. I look forward to my rotundas looking just as epic. Writing tools. Yes, you can't have AI without some sort of generative text summary rewriting engine. And Apple's got this one. You might have seen that ad with the guy where he hasn't read the prospectus and then he quickly goes away and taps a few buttons and comes back and says, yeah, here's my summary. Now, I don't advocate that, maybe do your job, but if you do want to check out the writing tools to summarize, to change the tone, maybe you, whenever you send an email, you always sound too angry, well, maybe you can soften that with the writing tools. I've had a quick play with them, uh, then probably not for me, but I'm very particular about my writing, but I look forward to looking at them in more detail. Priority messages to stay focused. Yes, we've all had those times where you've got a whole bunch of different notifications. The idea here is it's going to prioritize those, put the important ones at the top and summarize those where you're getting multiple different ones. I don't know how often I'll use this because as someone who limits my notifications and has notifications off on most things, it's probably not for me. But it's a cool thing, especially if you're overwhelmed with too many notifications. A more natural and conversational that person. Yeah, if you're anything like me, you use that person for pretty basic stuff like setting timers and asking the weather. Because if you go with anything more complex or conversational, they don't really know what you're talking about. So the idea here is that's improving. We'll find out. 
Visual intelligence is going to help us in the real world. It's going to use the camera app to help us explain complex diagrams and to detect phone numbers and to convert signs into different languages. Again, we've had similar features in other apps and on other platforms before. It's nice that things like this are coming to Apple. And if you're wondering, hey, are these all just within Apple's ecosystem? Well, no, they've actually partnered with ChatGPT as well so that that person and the writing tools can actually utilize some of ChatGPT's functionality. And that's going to work even if you don't have a ChatGPT account. But if you do, you can hook that up to say your Pro 4.0 model or whatever you're using and get apparently uh, even better ChatGPT integration. And there you have an example on the screen there where it's giving you some ideas and then you can check and follow up more with ChatGPT. Or of course, you could get it to write a bedtime story for your children. I wonder if that's the same guy that doesn't know how to do his job. And yes, you have your, but wait, there's more coming soon to iPad, iOS, and Mac OS Sequoia. So yes, this is just your little appetizer, your taster, your sampler of these Apple intelligence features and more is coming in 2025. So what do you think? Will you be racing out to update all of your devices right now? Or are you going to sit back and let folks like me be the guinea pigs and test everything out? Let me know down in the comments section of this video. And while you're there, check out the link to to the deep dive where I'm looking at all of the different features of the new Apple intelligence and version 18.2 on my iPad. I hope you found this one useful and I'll see you next time.